Hello City Skylines fans! I'm Socks Way Up and welcome back to How to Get Your City Started in 2011. This is episode 11. We're way beyond start. Right here to start off this episode, we're um, taking a look at all of our services and right now we're adding some more ex some extra water. I'm moving it a little bit away from where it was. We're going to move it far once we get more tiles unlocked. But that's what we started out with today, just to free up some of that area to potentially use in the future. And then I also put down some of these water. You also may notice that the game is playing a little bit faster than normal. We are doing a time lapse today because, as I mentioned in the last episode, we're going to do a lot of detailing of the city in this one. So that's why we did a time lapse mode. And here we're just taking care of our services to begin with, making some mistakes. Could have edited that out, but I thought I'd added it, leave it in there. And next we're going to hop on over to the other side, I believe. No, we're going to clean up some of this. We use. We use these, I forget what they're called. I don't know what they're called, but they pick up trash in the ocean. That'll clean up that debris for us. You know, the, the dirty water for us a little bit quicker and hopefully prevent it from flooding back the other direction. And then we're gonna rinse and repeat over here with the water pumps as well. So we're gonna add more than we need for now just to get things up and running. And hopefully we don't have to look at these for quite some time after making this change, but we get these ones up and running check our water levels they're looking good and then we're going to come on over and delete the other ones because we do want to build in this area pretty soon and we don't want the water pumps in that location and we also find a nice um, power line that we can delete as well so we're going to get rid of that and start cleaning up the city the last thing we take a look at before we jump into the detailing section is the garbage we want to make sure we have enough garbage we can see we're not processing enough so we went ahead and extended this area over here, which is our pollution zone of the city. Yeah, I wish you could do without it, but it seems to be a necessity. So we look at one of these waste transfer facilities. We're going to lay one of those down and play around with that and maybe take a look at the stats from it next episode. But we do add a few more of the waste processing plants. We're going to, or complex, which relies on one of the transfer complex and landfills that we don't have. We'll see how that works out. I wanted to I wanted to experiment with that because I haven't really used it. So we get it, it's not op operational. And then we lay down one of the trans transport plants and we'll come back and take a peek at that after the next episode. Yeah, there it goes right there. It looks like we do place down two of those, get those up to being operating normally and we move on taking a look at everything else there. We got all our services taken care of, and that's something that I like to do every once in a while, just kind of at the beginning of my playing sessions, take a look at the services, see how they're doing. But now we're transitioning into the, the primary focus of this episode, and that is detailing the city in vanilla. You can see we are kind of rinse and repeating what we showed earlier on in the series, but I want to do a deeper dive into it in this episode. And we kind of are limited to what we can use in this process, I kind of remembered that you can do some pretty cool things with vanilla detailing. It's not as bad as a lot of people give give it. You know, there's a pretty bad reputation out there that Vanilla City Skylines is boring. It's not as fun to detail. It's not as fun to build because of the limitations. I don't think it's true. I think it's just it takes more time. You don't have some of the mods that help us quickly do detailing. We don't have custom assets, but the vanilla ones from the game, they do the trick, especially for people that are limited and can't can't really run mods on their computer and can just run the game as is. And so here you can see we're upgrading some roads, which is a quick, easy way to add some detail and some character to your cities. So we're going, going through doing that. There's probably some roads that we want to keep adding that to later on. But again, we're just trying to give a, a little overview of things you can do. And you can see that already added some more depth, uh, excuse me, depth to your eyes on seeing those trees on the roads. Definitely helps the look of the city to make it look a little more realistic and as much as you can on vanilla. All right, so here's a look at some of the detailing that we've done before in previous episodes, and we're kind of taking a peek at that to kind of start reproducing that across most of the city or as much of the city as I could handle in one session. And we're going to get going with that right here. We're starting with the larger trees and we're just kind of filling the space. 
And one of the things that I like to do is just kind of randomly place them down. Kind of gives it the feel that they naturally grew on their own. And then just fill it in with some other things to make the eye draw to it and give it some color. So here we're adding in some shrubs. You really don't have to do this part and you're gonna find your own style of detailing as you get into this, but I like to cover up the grass and, and add more depth to it. For when we zoom in, we can see that there's more, it's just busier. I like the way it looks busier. And then here we start adding in just some random color to make it just kind of pop and stand out. And I think these vanilla assets do the trick for me when it comes to detailing. I don't really use them anymore when I do high detailed cities, but I'm enjoying it again in vanilla and it definitely takes your city to the next level instead of it just being these random cartoony looking buildings that come with the game you get some more color some more pop and it all goes together you can tell it was all designed by the same team and and designed for the same game and, it, and i think it does work out good one of the things i like to do is sneak these bushes up to these parks um and try to get them to show up as much as possible you kind of find the the area where you can you can set it down without it destroying the park and you can put it there and so we're really just rinse and repeating a lot of the same things in this section of the video to kind of get this area filled out and give a good example of how different the city really looks once you add this level of detail to it. And to kind of give you an idea of the amount of time I spent on this today, the first recording session that I did was about 35 minutes. We're playing it back. I believe it's times two or yeah, times two speed. So this section of the time lapse ends up being about 18 minutes, but I did pause it later on and start doing some more detail off camera, which we do show at the end. It was about an hour, hour and 15 minutes of total build time from what I did in this episode. All right, we jump ahead a little bit in this time lapse because I wanted to show some of the things that I do with boulders and rocks. I like to place them on top of each other to kind of create my own unique looking rock. This one turned out decent. Um, some of them turned out a little bit better than that one, but instead of it just being the same old little tiny rock that you place all over the place, there's some ideas that you can do where you can take different rocks, place them on top of each other, and it gives it a unique form and a unique look. You know, some of the things that you're trying to challenge yourself with to get beyond the monotony of using the same things over and over again. Another thing I like to do with rocks is kind of randomly place them in the areas that we purposely didn't zone because of traffic and keeping you know, the, the traffic off of the main roads, we kind of place down some boulders or rocks to kind of make it look like we intentionally built around the boulders when we created our city. It's kind of a nice um, visual that I like to add in. It makes the, the city look like it makes a lot more sense after you get all this detail in and you see where the roads ended up being around the boulders. And it's kind of like we worked around the nature and kept it intact instead of just demolishing some of these cool looking rocks that we've laid down and again we're doing it in reverse the rocks weren't there originally we're adding them and taking the mindset that they were there originally for our final piece and final you know deliverable so to say of the city when we get it finished and polished and and make it our own and then again, it's just some rinse and repeat with some of these bushes or shrubs and place them around again. I, I don't know if they're they're necessarily gonna be everyone's style or, or flavor or, you know, taste to um, add these type of shrubs. I like them. I like when we zoom in closer, the depth that it adds and it just, it seems more complete and more full. And that's kind of the look that I was going for when I was detailing this. And once again, just adding in some of that color with these uh, flowery trees. I forget what they're called, otherwise I'd give you the exact name. But some of them, are, you know, they get a nice pink color, some are red, there's some purple. And it just, it stands out and it's not just greenery, it adds a more diversity to your builds and the detailing, which is why I went with it. All right, and then we started to take a peek at our Park City, which is only three stars. We never upgraded that, so we went down and saw we have plenty of visitors to get to the top level to, to tier five or five star. So we lay down enough uh, entertainment just to get up to that point. 
And then boom, we're at level four, so now we can add some more of these playgrounds. And once we get to level five, we can get the trampolines and get those laid down. And finally get this city park finished as we wanted to do early on. So we get all of the entertainment done at that point. And again, since this is a detailing video, we're gonna go with the detailing. And we're again, a lot of rinse and repeat. We've came up with a style, a design that is gonna be the landscaping, the details, the look and feel of our city that is still unnamed by the way and we just go with it and we get this park finally finished i'm using some smaller shrubs in this area because they will fit better but they look the same they're just smaller assets and uh there's a few different varieties that you can use and you can pick from but for the most part i i typically use this same one um they kind of remind me of some bushes i had when i was a child that there was a lot of spiders in so i'm a little i'm a little scared of them but you can see here we're doing the same thing we did with the around that commercial area earlier we're placing down some boulders some rocks to add some more detail some more diversity to the build overall i think it it really like i said earlier it takes it to another level it makes it look complete and not just very basic city skylines which is completely fine to play if you're new to the game you're just getting used to managing money managing your your budgets and getting those things going and then when you get to the next level you start doing this detailing eventually you're going to realize you'd like to do this detailing a lot quicker so there's some mods that you can use like the prop line tool there's some extra landscaping tools that allow you to use a brush when you're laying down trees and really helps out a lot with the, the speed of detailing one of the other things that you'll notice that we do in this is there's some terrain with that building that park right there to the that we're covering up right now when we put these shrubs down the height difference of the terrain kind of goes away it's no longer a problem or it's no longer an eyesore we're kind of covering up the flaws of the terrain that we can't really can't really fix because we don't have mods like move it installed to be able to adjust the height of the buildings that we place down Detailing with shrubs and trees and bushes is a great way to cover up those flaws and make them not stand out and make it look like it is flush with the ground. Just some small tips and tricks that a lot of people, they figure out on their own, but sometimes you don't think about it and you get kind of annoyed when a building, you know, builds on its own and it's higher than the road in the back. And then, you know, you, you can cover it up with bushes and shrubs like we did and it takes away from the eyesore. Definitely one of my favorite things to do when building vanilla. Again, plopping in some color to make it pop from the eyes and I think it looks nice. The final, final product looks like it matches the other part of the city that we did detail. I'm digging it. this section i had a moment of brilliance uh we're still trying to grow this city so i decided while we're doing all this detailing what better to do than to lay down some residential and get it populated in so that we could then potentially detail that area as well but yeah so if you're going to go into one of these sessions where you're actually look right here i extend this road past where i want it to go and then i pull in the road and that helps me get that curve that i was going for on that transition a little tricks on vanilla since you can't use move it and road anarchy or whatever that's called yeah road anarchy but yeah so what we're doing here is we're going to start populating this new residential area and get it growing and established and like i was going to say this is a good thing to do detailing is a good thing to do while you're waiting for some of your areas to zone in sometimes zoning takes a while sometimes the game has to catch up to i place down a bunch of let's say commercial and a bunch of industry and a lot of, of a lot of residential the game has to balance all that out and kind of process it and slowly upgrade each area or slowly zone in each area and i find it to be a good use of time is to detail while you're doing that or waiting for that to happen So now we're putting down those zoned areas to allow houses to come in and kind of rinse and repeat from what we've done earlier in the series. This area looks completely different road design wise than some of the other areas. Like I mentioned in the first episode, we started very grid-like and we got way away from it long-term. 
Later on, we have a nice top view, top down view of the city, and you can see the, the road layout's turning out pretty neat. I'm, I'm very pleased with it, and I think it turns out pretty cool. And because we're growing the city, we are gonna give them some services down here, some elementary schools, a high school. We're also gonna add a child daycare as well, just to keep the, the balance in place of the education and No and, that was the end of my thought. But now we're waiting for these buildings to come in and because we placed down those schools, you see a ton of our other residents were upgrading because they were waiting for those services to get their buildings to upgrade to the next level. And I think that might be another video that we go into next is taking a peek at all of our building levels and seeing what they need to actually level up to the top level of the city skylines. I think it's like five, Depend. it depends on the asset, how many levels they can upgrade. But yeah, so we wait for that to fill in. This is when I transitioned to starting to do some detail off camera. Before we did that, we added some office buildings to help that population because you can see our residential demand just plummeted once we started building some of those new residential buildings. So we're starting to balance that out with this area and adding in some more offices, commercial, which I do off camera as well. But we're gonna get back to you with an update right after this. All right, let's take a peek at where we left off. We can just kind of, we're kind of doing a live play here, even though I am doing a voiceover on it. We're kind of going over the city, looking at all the detail we added in. Here's our new area. It came in nice. We got some of the shrubs, some rinse and repeat, so I didn't really want to show that. New areas coming in really good, turning out pretty, pretty slick in my opinion. Here's some areas that still need a little more detailing. Kind of ran out of a little bit of the motivation to do it in all of the areas. Need to take a break, but I wanted to finish this video first. Got a cool natural power line still there that you can see. This area needs a little bit of the shrubs. In my opinion, that's the difference right there. You can see that area has those tall trees, but it doesn't have the shrubs and those other bushes that have the color in it, and it makes a big difference. Here's the finished product of the park. Looking slick, looking complete. Looks like a cool place to hang out, in my opinion. Here's that top-down view I was talking about. The roads look neat. It's not There is no grid in this city anymore. There's, there's some curved roads. There's some uh, angled roads. Very cool. But yeah, a lot. there's the area we started with. Looking pretty slick. Um, I think this commercial area stands out a lot more than it did before. Right here I'm pausing because I took a little screen grab right there and possibly will use that as the thumbnail for this video. But I, I don't definitely think that adding in this detail takes away from it looking vanilla in air quotes it, it adds a lot more detail to it a lot more depth a lot more of everything it makes it look like a real city to me and not just roads where a bunch of buildings were placed down i think this is the next level or next step that most people do take when they're when they're big fans of city skylines once you get used to the services and the balance of the budget and all of those other things that come and come with the game Detailing's fun. I have a blast with it. It's kind of therapeutic to me. Uh, I don't know about anybody else, but it's definitely something that I really enjoy when I'm playing City Skylines. So this is where I leave you. Thanks a ton for hanging out. If you made it 18 minutes into this video, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, I'd like to plug that we have been playing City Skylines a ton on Twitch on Sundays, Mondays, and Wednesdays around 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Thanks for hanging out with me again on another episode of How to Get Your City Started, even though it's already been started for 11 episodes. But thanks for hanging in there. Thanks for checking it out. Thanks for supporting my channel. And yeah, it's been a blast. It's been a fun journey getting used to these YouTube videos and how to make them and, and getting established on this platform and making some custom content for everybody out there. Again, thanks for joining. I'm Socks Way Up, and I'll catch you on the next one.